What's going on? Welcome to Tech with Sean, and today we have a Dell Optiplex hooked up and a bunch of boxes, so you know we're getting into something. <laughs> Now, I was actually looking around at some of the arcade 1UP machines because the idea of having that arcade experience at home is really appealing, you know? But at the same time, that sounds really cool. They also have some drawbacks, like there's only a couple of games on them. Uh, you're stuck with that small form factor. The inputs, I don't think, are super high quality and neither are the screens. I wanted that arcade experience, so I wanted to put something together. And I was thinking, you know, I have these Optiplexes and they're super capable of running some arcade type stuff and so I figured what the hey I'm just gonna get some fight sticks customize them up how I want and hook one of those up as like an arcade setup so when we were kids my brother and I were big Nintendo fans and we had like a Nintendo Power subscription and everything but every once in a while you know you'd be at the mall and you'd pick up a Game Pro and I'd look with lust at those Neo Geo games because they looked so cool, but that uh, hardware was so expensive and the games were like really expensive back in the day, especially for a kid. So never got around to having a Neo Geo, but out of all the arcade machines, I always love stuff like, you know, Samurai Showdown. Um, you got other great fighters like Garou Mark of the Wolves. There's games like Windjammers, Neo Turf Masters. There's really a bunch of cool stuff on Neo Geo that really wasn't ever on Nintendo stuff. Um, or a little bit of it was, like I loved Samurai Showdown on Super Nintendo, but I would played it in the arcade, so I knew I was getting kind of like the Diet Coke version of it. So I'm excited to get this put together. I'm gonna customize some Mayflash F500s with a Neo Geo theme. And these are also gonna work with like Xbox and PS4 inputs for Steam games. So we're also going to be able to play like modern stuff on there. This is using the Dell Optiplex from the previous build. I'll put a link to it down in the description below. But it has an i7-3770, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a GTX 1650. So it's going to have plenty of power for running some emulation. And also it's going to be able to run some AAA type fighting games on it too. So let's start putting this thing together and see what we get into. <laughs> All right, now let's debox these boxes and see what we're working with. All right, so that box, we got two of the Mayflash F500 V2s, and it also had two uh, screw-on bat tops that we're gonna replace the ball tops with. So this is some smaller buttons. I bought a pack of, I believe these are all 24 millimeter. These are some cheap buttons. And uh, I'm just using these for like the home or add coin button on the top of the joystick. It's a slightly smaller size than the other ones. But these are kind of cheap and they have like a deeper press and like a hollower activation. And I think that's actually gonna be good for like a home button um, because the you won't be able to press it accidentally. And finally, this is two sets of uh, 30 millimeter buttons. There's a bunch of different colors in there. It was cheap to get two sets because I want um, eight a piece uh, with the Neo Geo colors. So these are Sanwa buttons. I don't know if you can read this. trying to focus. I'm not sure if it will or not, but it says Sanwa OBS F30 color 12 US FBA. So I'll put links to the sticks and the buttons and everything down in the description. And uh, those are affiliate links. If you want to use them, it does help out the channel and we appreciate it. Well, let's take one of these sticks out of the box and see what it looks like. got some cables and some bolts for stuff. Oh. 
That was the octagonal gate. It comes with an octagonal gate, but because I'm mostly doing just old school emulation, I'm probably just going to leave the square gate on there. So here's what it looks like. It's um, pretty beefy, you know, it feels substantial. It's not going to be sliding around too much when you're playing it. And um, it's not, if you have it on your lap, you know, it's gonna, it's a good size for that. You got a clicky stick. The buttons are like Sunwa knockoffs. They're maybe a little taller than a Sunwa button. Um, uh, let's see. I'm gonna leave this plastic on here until I replace the art underneath, just so I don't ding it up or anything. You got a metal plate on the back. You got a USB on the back. On the front, you have a headphone jack, a mute button, and something else. <laughs> on the side here is the compartment uh, for your cable. It sits in there so you can store it and then it's attached in there so you just pull it out to use it. But yeah, we're gonna mod that out. Bat top, custom Neo Geo art, Neo Geo colored buttons, and then I'm gonna put in just a white home button. So I guess let's get to it. <laughs> All right, we're back. We're about to take this thing apart and I'm just using the foam pieces that came on the stick itself to uh, flip it over. So you just got six Phillips screws on the back. So here inside the unit, this is the base of our stick. We'll loosen this screw and that'll let us take off the ball top. And then um, at the very end, we'll put the new top on. We'll wait till after we put on the new artwork and everything. We'll switch out these buttons. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to use some masking tape and make a little label on each set of wires uh, to say which button it goes to. That way, when I put the new ones in, I'm not going to get them all switched up. So, I'll go ahead and do that now. Alright, we're back. We got all of our buttons marked off. So that when we take them out, we're not going to get the wires mixed up and uh, we're going to go ahead and take the ball top off of the stick. I'm now disconnecting the quick disconnect uh, connectors. <laughs> That's redundant. But I'm not doing it very quickly. Uh, they're crimped on pretty well. So what I'm doing is pulling the wire up until the little tab catches and then I'm sticking in a really tiny screwdriver at the top and just prying a little bit and wiggling it until it pops off because I don't want to damage these. They seem pretty, pretty fragile. Um, I don't know, I'm a noob when it comes to modding arcade sticks, so I don't know if this is how they typically are, but I don't want to damage this existing wiring harness, so. That's my pro tip, get a really tiny screwdriver. <laughs> Okay, and now we have everything unhooked. So these are really easy to switch out. All you have to do is push these tabs in and oh. Well, I think I am going to have to take this off anyway. <laughs> the buttons ain't going to come out without it. So we're just going to go ahead and drop all of these out. I 
I just thought about it, but I probably should have hooked this up and made sure it worked before I started modding it, but whatever. If it don't, I'll put it back together and send it back. Okay, so here is our empty husk of a system. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take this part off too, because I need to switch the artwork out before I can start putting the buttons back in. It's just held on by some magnets and it pops up. Okay, now I did want to do a Neo Geo theme for this thing. So, I've put together some artwork with a Neo Geo look you know like the cabinet and I have it mapped out for A B C D and I also have the PlayStation and Xbox button prompts on the buttons so no matter what game I'm playing whether it's Neo Geo or Steam or whatever I'll be able to tell what I'm doing they have a template online for these and it's uh, made for 11 by 17 paper and it has some instructions that go around the outside but what I did, I made a 10 by 14 document in Photoshop, made my artwork, uh, dropped it in there, and then cropped it down. So I was able to print it on my printer at home on eight and a half by 14 legal size paper. Now I'm gonna spare you the agony of watching me slowly cut this thing out. So we'll cut back once I have this cut out. <laughs> I will say, I am going to put this on here and I'm going to use some masking tape to hold this in place so that it doesn't shift around while I'm in the process of trimming it out. Oh, I got excited and forgot to start recording. <laughs> I got the artwork put on there and now I'm inserting the buttons. So on the back there's these two little notches, I don't know how well you can make them out, but on the top and bottom of each hole there's a notch and you just line it up with these little sticky outie clips on the button. That's the official terminology. Alright, well now that we've got it all put back together we're just going to go ahead and reattach all the wires. This is where labeling everything will come in pretty handy. Okay, I'm really glad I labeled these right about now. <laughs> Okay, I think I have everything hooked back up. Now we'll just reassemble it. All right, here it is all put together. I'm pretty happy with how this has come out so far. There's a couple of things that I can see that I do want to tweak up here the positioning of this logo is right on one of these metal rivets um, I might push some of these little prompt uh, pictures out a little further from the button but all in all it looks pretty good I'll also probably get some glossy paper just because uh, printing this on gloss the red will come out richer than it will on flat paper but I'm pretty happy with how that came out. So I'll go ahead and um, get the other one modded up and get working on this emulation setup. And I'm probably going to do that in a separate video. So I'm probably actually going to re-record this looking at the camera too so you're not just looking at my hands. So. All right, well, we finally got them put together. Um, I'm really happy with how they came out. I think they're going to work out great for this emulation thing that I'm working on. and. Um, yeah, make sure you subscribe because I'm going to do a part two of this where I'm going to, you know, show off the whole emulation box with the MVS running on it through RetroArch and LaunchBox. And we'll see how the whole setup runs and uh, what kind of experience you get. So, 
yeah, make sure you subscribe to give us a like down below, drop a comment, and I'll see you in the next video.